Welcome back. This is National Geographic Weekend. I'm Boyd Matson. I'm sure you've heard that expre- expression that to really understand someone, you need to walk a mile in their shoes. Well, that's really not going to do you any good if you were trying to understand Sarah Marquis. Because over the past 20 years, she has walked herself in her own shoes some 18,000 miles. And right now she is on a journey from Siberia to Australia to add another 12,000 miles to her total. So just walking one mile in her shoes will give you no idea what her life is like. We've talked to her before uh, in the midst of this walk right now. We have got her on the satellite phone. She is somewhere north of Mongolia on the border with Siberia. Good morning, Sarah. Hello, good morning. (laughs) The walk, the great walk continues, except when we talked to you before, I think you were in Mongolia or you were in the edge of China, which would be the most direct route to go from Siberia to Australia. But now they've kicked you out of China, so you're having to go back to Siberia. Explain what's happened. Yeah, I was in a, I was in a Tibetan area, and I was walking as usual with my little trolley and everything. And then suddenly, uh, the army was there, and the police was there, and then I got arrested because uh, they didn't like me there with uh, all my little tools, means like uh, satellite phone, GPS, and topographic map. After China, I flew to Mongolia, and I decided to. I go to the Gobi for 60 days, and I start walking through the Gobi and go really deep uh, southwest in the Gobi. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's quite the response. The Chinese kick you out of China and, or out of the Tibetan area, and you decide, well, I'll just go walk in the desert of the Gobi for 60 days. That sounds like a punishment to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good plan, I think. I can tell you, it was, a, it was an amazing journey. Well, now you're in Siberia, and uh, it's summertime, so you're not having to worry about the freezing temperatures. No, that, that's good. The mosquitoes keep me alive, you know. They, they, they're really a good, they're doing a good job on that. And, uh, <laughs> and then now I'm really, uh, I'm really happy about, I had a really good news today. I, I've got my three months visa to go to Siberia. I'm in a border still in Mongolia now, and I'm going to uh, Siberia. So I'm going to do my kilometers, my, my Chinese kilometers. I'm going to do them anyhow, but in Siberia. <laughs> so I'm going to go walking around Baikal Lake. Um, it, it's about 2,000 kilometers, uh, and I will be able to do that in, uh, in two months, in two, three months' time. 2,000 kilometers, two to three months, walking in Siberia, just because you feel like you have to put in the miles. If you say you're walking to Australia, you've got to put in the miles to walk there. You were primarily, the last time we talked to you, eating oatmeal for breakfast and rice for dinner. But now that you're in, you've moved into a different landscape, I hear your meals have really improved. You've gone from rice to couscous. Yes. Actually, I just had a couscous with some cheese on the top. But I still, uh, I still stick with the oatmeal at the at the morning because that gives you energy. It is, the test is a bit boring, but gives you a lot of energy, so I stick to those things in the morning. But uh, I had a really, uh, I've been lucky on the, by the lake here because I, I bought some fishing gear and I catch some fish on the lake. Oh, that's, so that's I've been great. I to to a bit fishing and eat a bit of those funky looking fish, but they were really good. <laughs> funky looking fish, but uh, tasty. I think anything would be better than just uh, grain every day, nothing but grain. So you're getting a little variety. What about people? Are you, is much of this journey still without human contact, or are you running into people every day now? Uh, I still run into those uh, Mongol people, you know. Even if it's nobody there, uh, they always got a motorbike somewhere coming through with uh, with one Mongol with his traditional clothes on, looking at me weird, and I look at him weird, and we decide we're two weird people in this planet, and then we try to talk, we can't talk, so everybody goes on his way, and uh, everything is fine. <laughs> so sometimes you find, like, those uh, people going past, they're, they're moving a lot, Mongolian travel a lot uh, for different reasons. So in the Gobi, you were seeing a lot of the Mongolians on horseback, but since you don't speak their language, they don't speak your languages. You wave like ships passing in the desert sands and move on. And, and and now you will go sometimes two or three, four days without seeing anyone. Is that possible? Yeah, yes, yes. Especially in the Gobi. 
in Gobi have been like the last bit in Gobi have been uh, the last uh, the last leg I've been six days without hearing a noise that was an amazing thing it, it's not one nomad it, there is no animals uh, there is no water and uh, there is no noise it's really not even one motorbike noise you know you always find a, a noise in the background but there was nothing nothing for six days six days. Six days with no people and no noise. Total silence. That would be enough to drive some people crazy. Six days with no <laughs> water. That would be enough to scare some people to death. Uh, and so you, if you're going to have a drink, you've got to have it with you. And when you head out, you're not sure how far, how long, how much time it's going to take to get to the next water supply. A lot of this is a, a lot of this is an adventure in the sense that it's a mystery. You have no idea what you're going to find next. This is taking some uh, a leap of faith, I guess we would call it. Each day is a leap of faith with Sarah Marquis on her walk from Siberia to Australia. There are moments where you have no idea what's going to what's going to happen or, or how the day is going to go. Is that right? It's a part true, but another part also. I know I know my body really well, and I've been to. Australia before I, on my big walk in Australia with a really extreme heat, and uh, I know how far I can go. So I knew that with three liters of water per day, that would ha- give me uh, really the chance to go through six days. But three liters of water per day is not a lot. You have to be really you do, you don't walk during the day. You rest and you you don't uh, rest here by the mouth, you rest here by the nose. There is some little detail that you have to really be careful and really keep calm and uh, and uh, really do the right thing to be able to go through with no problem. Well, people can go online, go to Sarah Marquis, uh, dot com, and you can see, well, actually, it's Sarah... It, let me spell it out for people. It's Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, Marquis, M-A-R-Q-U-I-S, dot C-H. Not com, but dot C-H. Go to that website. You can see her blog postings. You can see pictures of her cart, what she's pulling, what kind of supplies you have, and f- and follow along on the journey. And thanks for uh, updating us on the latest twist in your in your trail that's taken you out of China and into Siberia. And we will check in again to see how you're progressing toward Australia, Sarah. Thanks for talking with us. Thank you very much. It was a real big pleasure to see you again. I'm starting to believe that sometimes we can hear statements of truth so often that they sound like meaningless platitudes. In fact, we even start to doubt that they're really true. For instance, how often have you heard, one person can make a difference? If you just do your part, we can save the environment. You're probably tired of hearing that. You may not even believe it. But one more time, I'm going to tell you. You can make a difference. And this time, it's not by recycling. It's not by changing the vehicle you're driving. It's not by changing your light bulbs. It's by changing your diet. This one, you will see immediate benefits. If not on the whole planet, you'll see them in your own pants. That story, when we return here on National Geographic Weekend, I'm Boyd Matson.